sure that our votes are counted. Um, if we have uh, this national initiative, how can we guarantee that our voice will be heard? <clears throat> well, first off, if you have the national initiative, you'll guarantee because you'll make sure that the voting is done fairly. Stop and think of the way we vote right now. Voting in this country at the federal level is a product of slavery. That, that was one of the things that they put in place so that they could control the maintenance of slavery, and that's what took a civil war. Then after the civil war, we passed amendments to the Constitution, and we still had another 90 years of Jim Crowism, where at the local level, laws were passed that were in violation of the Constitution, but nothing was done about it because federal elections are conducted at the local level. Stop and think what happened in Florida. We saw in Florida, in Ohio, elections that were outright stolen. What happened? What did the Congress do? They passed a law called Help America Vote Act and put up a few billion dollars to give it to private corporations to manufacture voting machines that work our terrible voting machines. There's no, we can use proper technology to make, permit people to vote. When you go to the website that we have for the National Initiative, we're asking you to vote. You can go the next day and see how you voted and change your vote. Why can't you do that under a, a federal system? Of course we could. It's because the will's not there to do it and the lobbying was, keep in mind, there's 30,000 lobbyists in Washington. You don't think that whenever these problems occur that these lobbyists don't descend on the Congress and say, okay, let's do it this way, do it that way. And then, of course, the public interest gets lost because you're satisfying the profit interest of those people. What do you think is going on right now in the presidential election? You wonder why you don't get good voting? Well, stop and think. They're bundling millions and millions of dollars. It's the lobbyists that are doing this. They go to their industries, collect the money, put it in a little satchel, and give it to the front runners. And so they have these millions and millions. These, these millions don't come from heaven. They come from special interest and, and the vehicle of the special interest of the 30,000 lobbyists in Washington, D.C. You want to change? Empower yourself. You want better voting? I got to tell you, it's not complicated. It's a will to have it done. And it should be done at the federal level, not at the local level where you can play all kinds of games. So this also would empower people to to have campaign uh, finance reform. Oh, of course, that, that goes without saying. I think that most Americans are fed up with uh, with what we have, that you have, you need millions and millions of dollars to corrupt the process. Corrupt the process. And the media just reports it. Boy, you're not a real candidate unless you got $10 million in the bank. Well, I'm not a real candidate by their standards. But if you hear my voice, I'm a real candidate. So what happens, it's the corrupting process that puts barriers so that the people can't get through those barriers. I will continue to speak up on these issues because what happens, American leaders do not tell Americans the truth. They give them this rah-rah stuff like cheerleaders, we're the greatest, we're patriotic. Hey, put all that aside. We've got serious problems and we have to deal with those in a mature fashion, not with these phony slogans that we're getting now from the main tier candidates. Okay, and I guess I got one last question from someone um, that wanted me to ask you about uh, protection of our civil liberties. Yeah. Tell you what, we ought to repeal the, uh, the Patriot Act. You don't think that the Americans wouldn't vote to repeal that in a heartbeat if they had the power to do it? Stop and think what happened. The Patriot Act was over 300 pages. It came onto the scene in very few days. In fact, I would say that nobody read it. Nobody read it. All little vignettes here and there, but nobody read it. And I would say from my experience of 16 years as elected official, 95% of the Congress does not read 95% of what they vote on. Does that give you a message of how easy it is for the uh, lobbyist for the special interest to go in there and get what they want at the expense of the American. Let me give you one example how the system works. Every elected official, and this is not, I'm not dumping on them because we need good people to run for office, but every elected official, whether it's a mayor or a member of Congress or the president, whenever they're about to make a public decision, what comes into their mind is, how does this affect me and my job and my reelection? That's human nature, and there's nothing wrong with that. 
Everybody would have the same attitude about their jobs. The next thing that comes into their mind is how does this affect the people who put the money up to get me here and to keep me here? And then the next thing comes into mind is how does this affect my party? Because if my party is in power, I've got power. Now keep in mind what I've just showed you. Because of the barriers of representative government, we haven't even got to the public interest, but at the fourth level. Now, if I've got an ideology or if I'm corrupt, it's the fifth or sixth level. That's when the public interest is dealt with. When the people vote on an issue, they have no barriers. They are voting on a majority basis, and when they identify their self-interest, no amount of money can bribe them because they know what is in their interest, and that's what they vote for. So when you look at representative government, it has generic barriers that cannot be corrected by representative government, and that's why we have to go to the people as a new foundation of power to permit them to make laws. The central power of government is lawmaking, not voting, lawmaking. Those that make the laws determine who, how, and when you vote. And that's why Americans have to wake up to the fact that they must become lawmakers and the and the procedures to do this are in existence right now. It's called the Federal Ballot Initiative, the National Initiative, and they can go to this website, nationalinitiative.us, and they can vote to empower themselves. And in that fashion, we go right around the government, and when 16 million Americans, about that number, vote for it, it becomes the law of the land, and nobody can do anything about it. The Congress or the Supreme Court can't touch it. Okay, well, I guess I forgot one other um, thing that I wanted to uh, talk to you about, uh, corporate media and whether the people are, are hearing the truth out there. Of course they're not. Of course they're not. Uh, and, of course, that's where all, all this money that's raised in campaigns is going to corporate media. Don't you think that's not a, an interesting conundrum? Raise uh, millions and millions of dollars from special interest in order to pay corporate media for time on television. It... it and the only hope today is, of course, this free media, like I'm getting right now, and, and the blogging that goes on. The Internet is the only hope we have to break this whole, break this thing wide open and let the people have a say. And so people become empowered. i got to tell you, you watch how fast they break up the monopoly that exists. Not only there, there's monopolies all over the place, and the people just will not put up with it. But of course the special interests do because they command the money and they buy their politicians by the pound. How, how much of a monopoly is there with the media? Oh, it's very, uh, five, five companies control it all in this country. I would commend people to read uh, a book by a close friend of mine, Ben Bagdikian. And uh, Ben is the guy who gave me the Pentagon Papers when I released them back in 1971. And it's called The Media Monopoly, and he's, I think he's on his third edition. And it describes in detail how they control it, from the likes of Rupert Murdoch and Fox and all of that. It just goes from there. It is a monopoly. It's the media monopoly. And, of course, it is what is destroying our democracy. Well, I thank you for your time, and I wish you the best of luck. And I want to thank you, Reed, for what you're doing in interviewing me for Democracy for America and public media. That's where the answer lies. The people must become aware of what is going on, and I hope that what I say falls on receptive ears.